Today, we'll be going over how to install a seismic skid plate onto your vehicle. We'll be demonstrating with the Razor Pro XP, but this installation applies to other skid plates as well. Keep in mind that we're showing one vehicle and yours might look a little different. You have to refer to your installation manual for specifics on this. This process will take at least an hour. A friend might be helpful to have around, but you can do this just fine by yourself. You'll definitely need a 10 millimeter socket, and you might need a drill with an eighth inch drill bit depending on your vehicle. For the Pro XP, you'll also need a 13 millimeter socket. Check your hardware parts list to make sure that you have everything before you get started. In the case that something's missing, drop us a line. You should have several skid plate pieces and two metal brackets. You may also have shims and spacers. This installation process is color coded. If you refer to the graphic in your manual, you can see exactly what hardware is used for each hole. This is what the Pro XP model looks like. Greens indicate that you put bolts in an OEM threaded hole, usually with a washer. Blue indicates that you'll use a type of clamp as specified by your manual. Yellow indicates that you'll thread bolts into clip nuts. Orange means that you'll use a bolt through an insert washer or nut. Red uses self-tapping screws, which may require pre-drilling of an eighth inch pilot hole. Keep in mind that there are different size bolts within the color categories, so you have to look at your manual for specific bolt placement. Some vehicles aren't as complicated as this one, so if you don't see all the colors presented, then congrats, you have an easier installation. Ah uh, yes, the easy life. Helping us with our installation today is Apollo, our esteemed office dog. Oh yeah, and uh, Darren, the one with the thumbs. To get started, get your vehicle up in the air. If you're blessed with having a lift, that's awesome. Get it up there. If not, you can put the top up on some ramps and lay underneath. Before you start putting all the big pieces together, attach your clip nuts onto the holes in your metal brackets. The threading should face upwards towards the vehicle. Refer to your manual to know exactly where to put these on your metal brackets. Most of this process will be putting in the bolts. We suggest that you do this by screwing in everything at finger tight, then fully tightening them all at the end with a ratchet or drill. If you have any insert washers, they will be shown in orange. For this vehicle, there's a single insert washer that goes right here. Next step, give me packs. Okay, Apollo. Then do the same thing for the clamp areas shown in blue. Identify where they are and what type of clamp they'll need. If it's a clamp like this, then you can attach it to the applicable plates. If it's a clamp like this, you can go ahead and put those suckers over their designated tubing. Make sure the clamp's threading faces the correct way in your installation manual. Warning, if you've ever driven your vehicle, ever, in your entire life, prepare for a light dusting when you do this. Fun! We'll now focus on the center panel, which goes here and looks like this. In this example, we bring the center panel up to install the first three greens with the tapered bolt and washers right here. Getting a few bolts in like this will attach your piece to the undercarriage so you don't have to hold it anymore. Now we'll attach our metal brackets. Stick these between the center plate and the body of the vehicle. Then you'll put in a few yellow area bolts and washers to keep the brackets in place. For this Pro XP, we put our first four yellow area bolts and washers into the corresponding clip nuts, two on each side. Now you can attach your rear body panel and loosely mount it with a couple of green bolts. You might have a backspacer on your vehicle. If you do, wedge it in its designated space between the vehicle and the rear panel, and thread a couple of bolts to keep it in place. For us, we threaded in these blue area bolts for our clamps. Oh! Hey, Butterfingers, I'm power napping over here. Jeez. Additionally, you might have an orange area bolt on the very back of the spacer. It doesn't thread into the vehicle, so instead we tighten its nut on top of everything to secure the panels together. Moving on to the front plate. You may or may not have to attach a bash plate to the very front end. If you do, attach this with its bolt before mounting the front panel. This is where we need our 13 millimeter socket. Direct it forward so that you can easily hook the front fold of the bash plate onto the undercarriage while making sure that it lines up with the tapered bolt and washer at the front end of the center panel. Now place bolts into the green areas to keep the front panel mounted. And now we're going to put a bolt through the insert washer from earlier. If you do this, you might have to hold the insert washer from above while you tighten it from below. Now let's get to the side panels. Lift up one side at a time and make sure to snap on any clamps to the undercarriage if you have them. Now you can attach the rest of the screws as directed in your installation manual. Start with the bolts that help hold up each side piece. The last ones you should add are the self-tapping screws in the red areas, unless otherwise stated in your manual. Once they're all finger tightened in, go ahead and fully tighten them all up. 
We suggest using a ratchet by hand to make sure they're not too loose or too tight, but a drill will work just fine if you're crunched for time. After that, you're all done. Now you can enjoy your next ride even more knowing that your undercarriage is well protected with Seismic. Mm -hmm. Alright, I want to go on a ride. <laughs>